Hey, this is John Pyle. You're listening to From Nothing to Profit. Welcome to From Nothing to Profit, a photographer's podcast with Matt and Kaya, where each week they talk to photographers about what is working in their business now so you can swipe those ideas and grow your business faster. Welcome everyone to From Nothing to Profit with Matt Hoagland and Kaya Bondurant. Today we are interviewing John Pyle and we are looking forward to a very entertaining and educational interview. John Pyle is an award-winning professional portrait, model, and lifestyle photographer in Columbus, Georgia. And he specializes in senior portrait experiences and you will love his lifestyle work too as well. You can check him out on Instagram and you'll see a lot of great work under John D. Pyle and we'll talk about that later. John has been a photographer for over 10 years, and I have to tell you that I'm pretty sure that he talked on the phone to my husband about starting his photography business at the very beginning. So I've seen John grow in the industry to being one of the best photographers out there. And he is also a licensed commercial drone pilot, and he is married to Sally Ann and has two little girls who are nine and five. Oh my gosh, they're really grown up, John. <laughs> I know, I know. It's scary. And there's one more thing we can talk about, John. How about those bull- How about those bulldogs? They look real good, don't they? We look awesome, um, but we haven't been tested yet. Yeah, so we'll see. But uh, we will see. LSU is huge. Auburn will be huge. We will see. But we look great right now. I don't mind winning. Right, exactly. And by winning by a lot. So, Yeah, I'll take it. Awesome. I'll take it. Anything else you want to share with us, John, about about yourself? Or um, we can even just jump right in and you can kind of tell us what your expertise is and um, what people should be watching. For yeah, me. maybe a little bit about my background would help um, kind of give an idea of where I came from because I have an undergrad and a master's degree in, in the psychology field and uh, really love human interaction and studying humans and connecting with people and came out of graduate school and worked for a while in a counseling type environment. And then I actually became a pharmaceutical rep for 10 years after working so closely with the uh, psychiatrist where I was working after grad school. And uh, a drug rep came in one day and was detailing us on on a medication and he left and I thought, well, I can do that and I can do it 10 times better than he can. Uh, So I was in that industry for 10 years and uh, five years into that industry started the uh, photography business and started building it up. So I guess I always tell people that a lot of the uh, human behavior and emotions and connections that I studied and learned about in in graduate school uh, helped me along with the business and marketing side of the pharmaceutical industry. So I kind of come from those those two worlds. So uh, I, th- I always think that's a good idea to, to share that. Yeah, and you can see that in your work too. You can see the your understanding of how people interact and catching those those moments. So that's that's pretty neat to think that you came from the that side of it. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's a it's a two different worlds combined to uh to meet in another world so mm-hmm. <laughs> but, it, but it helps it does help yeah so so kai and i have known each other known you for a long time um but some of our listeners won't know so talk a little bit about like your expertise or what you're known for and, and things like that well when i started uh you know i grew up with my dad who was a college chemistry professor but he loved to travel so he was kind of an advanced hobbyist and one of the things that always grabbed me was after a a trip. If you remember back in the eighties, everybody went to Europe. That was like the big travel boom that took place. So he dragged us to Europe and uh, I could not wait for like a month after we got home because on Sunday afternoon, we would go to church, come in, have lunch. And he would pull out the big slide projector with the big screen and the carousel and the lights would go off. And we got to relive that entire trip um, with all the images. It's like a big surprise. It was like going on the trip all over again to be able to see those those images and um you know that's where my love for for photography came from was the emotion that i felt from from seeing those images and i was the guy at georgia at college that always had a camera with me people would kind of joke around and be like well there's Paul with his camera again but the ones that made fun of me were the ones that wanted would be the first in line to see the pictures from a ball game or from a weekend out in downtown Athens or at the beach or wherever. 
So when I started taking pictures and creating work, the only thing that really seemed to uh, enjoy or that I enjoyed was uh, people that wanted to get their picture made uh, involved in weddings or things like that. Everybody was self-conscious. They would put their hand up. Don't take my picture. Get the bride. I don't want to be in a picture. And I was just so frustrated. Like, why do you, I mean, that's what we're here for. Like, this is a, an occasion. What are we doing? Why are you hiding from the camera? So when I came across seniors and people proudly or excitedly stood up to get their picture made and want to be photographed, like the light bulb went off. And that's where I landed in the senior and, and teen and a little bit of family market. And so just quickly, why do you, why do you think seniors come to you? You know, I, th- I know that's a big part of your business. So why, why do you think they come to you? Sometimes I'll see on Twitter <laughs> a joke. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with Twitter, you know how uh, volatile it can be. But uh, I remember a couple of years ago, some, somebody posted, if John, Ky- if John Powell can't make you look good, girl, I can't help you. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I don't know if that was a compliment or not. It's probably a passive aggressive subtweet towards some somebody. But <laughs> but I kind of I kind of like to think that, that it's it's my job to make you look and feel amazing no matter who you are. And um, I think that seniors, high school seniors, girls and guys come to me because they trust that they are going to look and feel amazing. And, and so do their parents. So I would say they, they know that the end result is going to be quality. Yeah, I love that. So John, so you've kind of told us your area of expertise is in the seniors and the lifestyle and that type of thing. I think also something that you're known for is your connection to what's really like in style and fashion. And I remember just watching you grow your Instagram account and how you immediately were tagging Ralph Lauren and, you know, the high end brands. And so I feel like that's something that is part of your expertise as well. Would you say that's true? Yeah, I feel like I I want to stay ahead of the curve and, and current in pop culture and, and, you know, even though I'm in my, well, let's just say I'm not, I'm, I've passed over 40 now. Um, but I need to stay You're still current. a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to stay current in that field or in that area with, with the quality brands that, that have lasted throughout time, not just pop-up trends, but with, with quality brands, like you mentioned, Ralph Lauren, uh, things that have stood the test of time from, from music to, uh, to locations, to hotel brands, luxury brands, things that have, have proven their worth over decades. Yeah. Uh, is, is what I like. So I want to stay dialed into those so I can bring that into my work. I definitely feel like you identify yourself with them really well. So tell us, John, like the story of what is working now in your business or like one of the greatest ideas you've had and how that's turned into a success. I honestly think right now they're the, the combination of the work that I'm bringing because I'm able to on a session, get a lot done, but I, I'm able to bring in kind of some, some candid lifestyle work that, which I love. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That, and you see a lot of it on Instagram. So people relate to it, but I want to, you know, I love my lifestyle work to make you either wish you were there or wish you were with the person that is there in the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to grab that attention, but I also want to make sure I get quality sellable work that, parents and grandparents are going to love also. So I, Mm -hmm. you know, to say what work, what's working for, for me right now is the combination of, of those, uh, those, those genres is classic portraiture combined with, with lifestyle. And it's been really successful in selling albums because as, as people come and see their work, you know, a picture of them laughing with their hair hanging in their face or, you know, jumping off a wall or swinging a bat may not be a 40 by 60 canvas that mom's going to hang up, but they also don't want to delete that image. I mean, it's, it's important. And uh, so I, yeah, it's part of that story. So when, when you see those images and you see the story of the whole day and how if you have one of our albums, you know, you flip through that and it's in there and tells that story. Uh, the work is, is great and, and everybody seems to be happy. How do so? How do you strike that balance? Um, like, kind of mentally, what are you thinking through? I don't know if you think about it in terms of percentages of you know pictures for mom and pictures uh, for the senior, and like how how do you kind of strike that balance? 
the first thing I do is is I always like to start out with a with good solid headshots with the first outfit and the first look because that's when they're coming straight from hair and makeup. Down here in Georgia, it is hot pretty much uh, fifty weeks out of the year. <laughs> so I mean, here we are in the you know early October and it's ninety three today down oh here. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's it. We're in the middle of a heat wave. So, but there's a hurricane coming. Uh, which is kind of scary. About three hours away is Destin, Florida, where we do a lot of our destination sessions. And uh, there's a tropical storm coming out of the Gulf that's heading heading right there. And we're going to get going to get some rain from that. But uh, back to the original point, the, it's always hot and a little bit humid, or not a little bit, a lot humid here. So I like uh, a good fresh makeup before the hair curls start to fall, before they start to sweat underneath the hair, or skin gets matted. Uh, or greasy and loses that matte finish. So I like to start off with some good solid headshot work that I know is is going to either look good at the first page of an album or is going to be the the quote unquote senior picture that they're going to hang up in the home. Yeah, I feel like they really want that now. I feel like, you know, it went toward more candid lifestyle and that was something that other people couldn't create and now I feel like they want to look like they went and got senior pictures done. Yeah, I would agree with that because, and I, I'll tell you what I attribute that to is is the is kind of the boutique clothing industry. Mm-hmm. I, I see a lot of repetitive volume work of girls that are modeling for the boutiques, and they're just kind of standing there, looking off to the side, laughing with the with the heel bent up uh, or with the with the foot on yeah. the tiptoe, showing off the outfit. Mm-hmm. And you see that over and over and over again. So it is nice to see a a picture that has a point to it like you know this is me this is my face this is my hair this is a this is a headshot of me I think that's always going to be in play yeah I agree that's that's awesome so let's let's take a break right there real quick okay we'll we'll come back in just a second and uh we'll talk about what you see is going on in the industry I know that's one thing you and I have always talked about is what's going on in the industry and then we'll do some lightning round stuff and figure out if there's any resources and stuff you can recommend to people. So we'll be right back. Awesome. Hey everyone, tell me if this sounds familiar. You look at your calendar and notice you need clients now. So you do a little marketing and get some phone calls. You get busy helping those new clients. They schedule sessions, they place orders and life is good. But once they're done, your calendar is empty again. The reason is you didn't have time to market while you were busy. Sometimes your business feels like a roller coaster. And let me tell you something, it is. And believe me, you're not alone. Photographers everywhere have the same problem. But I have some great news. Matt's business, Allison Ragsdale Photography, after years of trial and error, has cracked the code. It works so well, he's created a new class all about it. It's called Get Clients Now, a dead, simple approach to getting photography clients. Everyone at From Nothing to Profit is excited to share this info with you because this system helped Matt and Allison book hundreds of clients this year at their studio. And the best part about this system is that it's simple to set up and it works while you're sleeping. No hard selling or creepy marketing. All you have to do is help your clients answer their most pressing questions. Clients love the system and say it is the number one reason they book with Matt and Allison. If you're interested in learning more about this system, go to photopodcast.co forward slash simple. Matt has created a short free video that introduces this system. If you like what you hear, podcaster listeners get an exclusive discount on the full class. So make sure you go to photopodcast.co forward slash simple and sign up for the free video. It will help you book more clients now and create the business you've always wanted. All right, everybody, welcome back. So we're speaking with John Pyle, and I have probably the most interesting question I want to ask him, and that is, John, what are you fired about up in the industry right now? Or what are you seeing in the industry that you're really paying attention to? Um, We mentioned, actually, Kaya mentioned a little bit of it earlier, and that is the kind of the, the return of good, solid portrait work. Um, because a lot of people are quote unquote photographers and boutiques are pumping out, uh, iPhone pictures of, of models wearing their clothes over and over and over again with the same poses, looking to the side, laughing, uh, fingertips on the sun hat, um, with the toe kicked up on the sidewalk, uh, all those, those kind of tanned lifestyle or forced fun, I like to call them, uh, forced fun shots. The volume of that actually helps because when you see a good, beautiful portrait come through on a, on a feed or a, a website or a social media account, 
uh, it really stands out. So I think bringing that, yes, yes, I think bringing that back and being able to create that at a high end quality level mixed in with some lifestyle work is what's uh, what's making everybody happy. Because you got to remember, you're you know, the senior portrait market is inter- is in- uh, interesting because you're you're satisfying several clients. Uh, you're satisfying dad who's paying, uh, and again, I'm you know speaking probably stereotypically, but dad who's paying, mom who wants to see sweet baby girl, and senior who is trying to break free. You know, she's this is her senior year. This is a big deal. These images um, she's going to be posting and sharing maybe throughout her senior year, you want them to have uh, some, some uh, link to them that she's going to be able to post these in college or be proud of these when she comes home from school and they're hanging up. So you want to be able to have solid work mixed in with, with the other work. Well, so where do you think the industry is going, John, since you're, you're saying it's going toward more portrait work and people are liking that? So what's the next step? Do you see something specific in the future? Um, you know, I think the ability to create work with a lot of different tools and mediums is definitely beneficial in my case. I have iPhone, I have GoPro, I have a drone. That's a big deal. I have my DSLR. I had I had a, uh, actually a Fuji mirrorless for like a uh, a year and a half, and uh, just to be able to create work and not worry about well, that's not shot with a DSLR. I mean, I put an iPhone image in the album before uh, because she loved it so much, and and I think really? a professional, yes. Yes, I know people are shocked by that. But do you um, pull like how are you shooting with an iPhone during the session? Like, do you just pull? Because I use mine for video or for behind the scenes stuff. It's interesting. This probably goes back to some of the psychology of it. I can have someone that's a little bit stiff and rigid at the beginning of a photo shoot, or in a certain outfit, or at a location. And when I put the the DSLR down and pull out the iPhone I, and say, all right, we're just going to go on the story real quick. I will get a completely new personality to pop. Yes, up. really. That's, I, a, I totally agree with you. Yes, yes. So I, I use that sometimes to say, okay, uh-huh. wait, that was awesome. Now let me get that with the real camera. And um, so I keep the iPhone on me. It's a, it's a, you know, at the bare minimum, I get an outfit shot. For, for story, for Instagram story with every yeah. senior, with every outfit they have. So it's only yeah. during the photo shoot. That is fascinating. But that, that, that uh, yeah, that, that boundary seems to be broken. And that's why I originally went with a mirrorless camera because it was so small. Um, but it was with the Fuji X Pro 2, it was pulling out a lot of quality. Yeah. With, with their lenses, and it was small and compact. And there wasn't that wow, this is a big deal. This is a big, bulky 7200, and it's in my face, and I'm standing here, and mom's looking at me, and we're in the middle of downtown, and cars are watching me, and yeah. oh my God, you know, that panic that, that that's in. So if I can do anything to break down the barrier and, and get real, and because, you know, these kids are used to these iPhones in their faces, their friends, they're on them all the time, so it's a, it's a, normal, a normal thing for them, and it definitely breaks down that barrier. Yeah, they like to play around, be more silly, that type of thing. Yeah, definitely more relaxed. And and I mean, I get I get great great shots with oh, an I iPhone on a senior session because yeah, because they're they're you can see their fingers relax, the shoulders drop, the uh, the mouth not as tight. You know, all mm-hmm. these little subtleties that you don't really think about that show up. Um, you can see that. So once I get that, and I want. The, and if I can recreate it with a DSLR, I will. That's that's really fascinating. Let me let me circle back to one thing that's kind of connected to this that you were just talking about, like the difference between like what boutiques are are cranking out versus what you're cranking out. What do you think is the difference between the two? Like you were talking about, you, you mentioned like a quality difference. So is the quality difference? Is it lighting? Is it posing? You know what? What do you think? is the difference that people are seeing when they see a high quality picture on one of those Instagram accounts versus just something that the store owner shot with their iPhone? Like, what is it? Right, right. Well, you know, I think the the big thing for me is to constantly show 
how the the medium on which the images are going to be shown. So, you know, whenever a big product comes in, like our wall art or a gallery block or an album, I love to to show that because, you know, my images, every image that I shoot, I have to assume that it's going to be a 40 by 60 somewhere blown up. So I can't really take a chance on just, you know, rapid vomiting out images over and over again and hope that, you know, one out of the 300 will look right for for Instagram. I've got to have consistency, which is what I believe a professional duty is, is to be consistent. And the fact that, that work is is not going to be seen for in the consumer market in the same way that uh, it may be seen in another market. These are, you know, this is work that's going to be hanging on someone's wall, that's going to be seen in an album. And it's got to be able to to pass that test and not look good on a not just look good on a on a small screen. So I love to show that that look, my work is is made to be seen other places besides a device that you're currently holding in your hand. And so you do that by showing it on social media, like in your story or that type of thing. Yes, that's the goal is to uh, is to include it in my story and and show the work being being seen on different formats, different mediums canvases gallery blocks albums all that type of stuff yeah yeah albums you know album is is a really hard and i keep talking about the album but good quality albums where you are turning pages and seeing custom design work as you flip through it it's of yourself or or of your child it's hard to uh to replicate because if you think about it someone who is not charging uh, a lot for their for their work is not going to use or have the money to invest in a quality album for their for their clients. They're either not going to have the work that's up to par, the consistent work of 30, 40, 50, 60 page or 60 images to mm-hmm. put in an album, nor are they going to invest in the quality of an album that, uh, you know, is is uh, is not cheap to and sell that album. Um, yeah, that's true. So. That's why I'm big on our albums right now. That's that I would say nine out of ten of our seniors get get an album, and you got to have good quality, consistent work on every picture when you're going through that album. So, where do you uh, get your albums? Uh, I use Fineo. I love their covers. They have uh, like leather covers and traditional work that looks good for guys, and then they have uh, frilly, bedazzled colorful work that uh covers that look good we have the swatches here that you can touch and feel and hold i have three or four sample albums of our different sizes and uh so i love to put those in the hands and let people feel the leather and flip through the album and kind of imagine if it's you know their own daughter and i've actually done that on several occasions i've gone in and 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 pre-built an album up on the you know in in my design software Mm -hmm. yes and, and screenshot it and had it at the end of their slideshow so they can say, you know, wow, this is, these are the images and the album that he created for me just to show them what it would look like and how the design goes. Cause sometimes there is a disconnect when you come in and you see, you know, some other family or, a, or some other senior hanging up on the wall or you're like, well, that's her. That looks good because it's her. It may not look that good if it's me. So if yeah. I can show them that as, you know, with them, it's a big deal. Yeah, that makes complete sense for sure. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, I think, yeah, you just got to be careful about that disconnect because um, in our studio, we talk about, you know, if we confuse people, that's how we lose. And so if someone doesn't see it and some people liter- yep. literally need to see it to not be confused. And so knowing your client is is huge there. Um, John, I'm going to I'm gonna bait you a little bit on this real quick just, just because we've Okay. had years of this conversation. Where, where do you think the industry is going right now? That's a good question. I'm seeing um, a lot of things. I'm seeing a need for people wanting uh, a lot of work. And I don't know if it's just the way that, that I've set up or the, the number of images that I show, but they tend to to want everything. Um, so if they're going to come here and they're going to invest and take the time and the money to do this, they have a hard time leaving anything on the table. And, you know, of course my, my images have value monetary and, you know, a connection, uh, connection value, but I've had to just kind of step back and say, okay, 
this, you know, this picture of, of senior and her sister where they're laughing is not something, you know, or pretending to choke her or punch her play or whatever is not something that's going to be up on a canvas, but you know, it is something that she may want to print out on a floppy piece of paper on a four by six and tape it to her wall at, in her dorm next year. And who am I to, to kind of deny that, you know, I mean, why, if I've already created the image and it, and it looks amazing and they're willing to invest to have it, then why am I setting up boundaries and hoops to jump in order for them to get that no matter the, the medium that they, that they want to show it on. So, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting and, and trying Trying new things. I started off the year and I made a couple of changes and I have a certain price point where you can actually get all the images. Have you not done that before, John? I have. And I tried to change it up at the beginning of the year and Uh kind of include some images at a lower price point. And it actually did not work how I wanted it to. I had a couple of low, I had a couple of lower sales because of that, because some people, uh, depending on the client, are happy to get two or three images or or 10 Mm -hmm. or 15, Mm -hmm. but most people want everything to have, and they don't know why they want it. They don't know what they want to do with it. So I've actually been thinking about kind of a, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this about my business. It's, I struggle every day to try to make it easier. Matt, you mentioned confusion is is where you lose people. It's very difficult, in my opinion, to to get my pictures. And I I run it through my head several times because there is a phone call or an email where we talk. There's an in-person consultation where we meet. There is coordinating with makeup artists. There's meeting on the day of the shoot. There's completing the photo shoot. Um, not to mention the outfits and the stress over that that I know people uh, put on themselves. Then uh, you have to meet. You have to see me again so that I can go through all the the images with you. And then I have to build everything. And then you have to meet me again so you can pick everything up. And I love people, so it's a great. You know, it's it's fun, but at the same time, it's very time consuming and it's a lot of work, what I call hoop jumping, which I'm trying to figure out a process where I can eliminate some of that. So uh, you're not wanting to have the hoops. You're saying. No, I don't want the the hoops. I'm trying to figure out a way to to get rid of a couple of the hoops. And I don't know if that's an in-person, I mean, kind of a FaceTime or Skype pre-shoot consultation, which, you know, I'm a little weary of getting rid of because then you don't see me in person. You don't get to see and hold the products or see them on the wall. You're kind of coming into it blind. And then I've run through scenarios where, you know, you're going to see all your images prior to your ordering appointment. So you're going to get a kind of a down, a a download watermark link the night before you'll see everything. And then you'll come in and you'll make your decisions, which I'm weary of because I think we all know that if an image leaves, your possession the uh any it's not yours anymore yeah it's gone yep it's mm-hmm. gone and i don't care if it is a 30 pixel by 30 pixel wide thumbnail they will it will it, it is it has value and they will put borders around it and the puppy dog snoot on it with ears and send it to their boyfriend because you know on snapchat story or whatever um it has value so if you release it it is uh it's gone yeah, um, so true. So I'm I'm weary of that. Um, I thought about having an all inclusive price from the very beginning that says, okay, you know, we're going to book a John Pyle senior experience, and you pay a down payment to book the the session. The day of the session, you pay the remainder, and then that minimum point, you're going to have all your images, and then when you come to pick up everything on the USB drive. If you choose, you will have a print credit that is good for that day only that you can order your album or order some wall art. But, you know, then I'm thinking, wow, they're getting a, you know, a tremendous amount of images for a certain payment. And that's all my work, you know, so I'm constantly trying to to figure out an easier system uh, to put in place to make it 
easier to get my work, but still have the value that I've, that I'm known for. Yeah. I think it's fun to hear you say, say that because what you're really saying is I am trying to figure out how to make this work because the industry just continues to change and change and how people buy continues to change. And I think that's so smart. Yes. And it changes monthly. (laughs) It seems like, um, you know, it changes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. It changes from class to class. You know, I'll have a situation where I'll have, uh, you know, eight or nine girls from one school. And then the next year I'll have one from that same school. And you're like, what happened? And then the next year they'll all come back to me. It's just, uh, and you know, I think that's what keeps me interested with the whole psychology as- aspect of it. It's figuring out why people do what they do, what the decisions are made, who makes the decision, you know, who's in charge, who is, is who's making the decisions. Why did this person come to me? You know, I've, I've had to just throw out rhyme and reason on on why people come to me because they're it just went out the window this year. I've had, you know, I've had someone come down from uh, New York, and then I've had uh, someone come up from Florida, from Tennessee. I've had clients in the past that wanted to go to the Virgin Islands for her senior pictures, and then I have someone that, you know, I hasn't paid me, and it's been three months. You know, so it's just, it's all over the place. A little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, want to yeah. Cir- I want to circle back real quick okay. and uh, talk about, yeah, okay. talk about, <laughs> um, you know, John, your idea of make, keeping it simple because Alice and I are in the same spot in our business. Like, how do we simplify this? How do we make this easier for people to spend our money? And I watched a really cool um, YouTube video about when Jeff Bezos from Amazon became CEO. And for like the first couple of years that he became like a, like big time CEO, obviously he was always the CEO, but when he had a huge team, he only thing he did is he walked into his meetings with his executives and just said, how do we make this easier for the customer? And that's what he focused on for years. So, you know, they had the one click, you know, purchases and all these other things. And his whole goal is like, how do we make this easier for people to spend money? How do we make it easier for them to get our product? And, and he, they've built an empire doing that. Yeah. And it's just really interesting because we're in the same spot. I'm with you. Alice and I meet with people all the time and it's like, you know, you, you won't know why it's necessary in each little spot, but you're like, is it really necessary? You know, people are busy and I'm asking them to meet with me five times and that's just tough. So I'm right with you. Right. Yeah. That's a huge challenge is, is, I mean, we don't think about, what's going on. The, the seniors, their senior year, they have something every day. Uh, there's cheer, there's softball. Yeah. There's something every day. Attention spans are getting shorter. Parents are getting busier. And if there's anything that I can do to eliminate a step, it would, it would be great. I've just got to figure out what that is. You know, I've, I'm grateful because of the connection that my clients and their families have to me. But it is a kind of a double-edged sword that time. I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, I had a client uh, that, that came by after work, and uh, her daughter, the senior, had something going on, so she couldn't be here. And the mom came by to, to pick up everything. And she said, well, I think I'll leave the album for her because I know she wants to see you and get a picture on your story with the album. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah, I'm like, wow. That's uh, I said, you know, you really need to go ahead and – get it for and just send me a picture and she goes yeah I guess I could do that and I mean I don't I I love that I'm honored I think that's the coolest thing in the world but you know that's my time that's another another appointment you know another trying to coordinate things late in the evening that's going to be hard for her and hard for me and um I've got to figure out some way to to streamline it even if it even if it's just a little bit to make it easier for everybody you're just too popular John <laughs> I would cool want to be on your line. story too. If I could figure out how to do it, I'd be there. Well, that, that was the agreement. Then the contract that John signed for this podcast oh, is perfect. that we got to we got to be in a story at least once before December. Okay. There you go. I'll put okay. you, Matt. I'll put you with the uh, with the puppy dog ears and the. No, and her, no, her I, yeah. I have never done that. I would. Uh, <laughs> you got no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't need to be on your story, uh, John. No puppy dog ears for me. <laughs> You, 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 you're one poppy, puppy dog ears from just ruining Kaya's brand and image. Oh, you know? <laughs> oh I'm so sorry. I know that's sacrilegious, but don't, don't do that. No, I don't do that either. I don't do, you know, and your story is, is, 
arguably just as important as the the image that you oh one hundred percent. I I totally agree. They people come in and that is what they're thinking about. They're worried more about the story than they are about your um, actual images that they're going to purchase. Absolutely, yeah. the, the high school seniors, yeah. their moms oh, yeah. don't know what's yeah. going on, but. And, you know, if you think about Instagram, and I'll just say this, it, it's the, the engagement is so low. You know, if, if I'm at, you know, nearly 13,000 followers and I have, you know, 400 likes average, you know, do the math on that. It's 0.0 something yeah. Of, yeah. of engagement. It's ridiculously low. And there's, you know, there's all kinds of reasons for that. You never know. I've, I've tried to analyze and, and study what makes someone like. A picture, you know, I've looked at color trends, the, the pleasing blues, people seem to like sunsets, water, those seem to score higher, you know, all that stuff I've, I've studied and analyzed. But you just, you really, you really don't know. And, and that seems like such little interaction. But if your stories are getting, you know, I'm seeing two, 2,100, 2,200 views on my stories. Uh, yeah. th- that's a big deal. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of confirmed, confirmed views. So, you know, that's arguably just as important as, as a, as a post would be. Okay. So John, I don't know this part of the story. So the question is what was holding you back from becoming a full-time photographer? So I don't know how long you wanted to be a photographer, but mm-hmm. how did that come about? What, what was the trick to, for you to step into it? Well, I, you know, in my other industry, I had built up some savings and, and as a drug rep and built up uh, some capital. And the, the industry, which it is, still is today, is so uh, wishy-washy. It can implode at any second. Companies are always buying each other out. There's generics. There's the government involvement. There's health care, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, insurance. Different administrations can can set the tone for for healthcare, and it was just a nightmare. You ne- I mean, you would just get a phone call that says, "Hey, we're we're uh, we're going to have a conference call this Friday. Be sitting by your phone," and mm. you wouldn't know if you were going to have a job. And um, oh my gosh! So, and, and my wife, who was in uh, an, who was an RN, who also got in the industry, and we were both in it in the heyday of it. I like to call it the first five years. And then it started to implode about 04, 05. She was laid off three times during that hmm. for not because of, you know, bad sales numbers or anything, just, Hey, oh, we're going to yeah. realign the territory or we're going to have the person in Atlanta come down and call on every doctor in Columbus. So thanks for playing. You know, <laughs> and you're like, wow, there went the company car. There went the insurance. There went the gas. There went, you know, it's a, it's kind of a brutal industry because it's one of the few jobs that, when you get laid off, not only do you lose that salary, but your expenses go up. And uh, it, it, it's a, definitely a catastrophic, panicky situation. But for me, I had built up, you know, I would have to say it was the confidence in, in my wife that said, look, we, you can do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm tired of getting laid off. I'm already your assistant. I'm keeping, I'm answering the phone for you. I'm, you know, I'm uh, doing our books, our taxes, I'm sending things to the lab. Let's try this because if we don't, we're you're you're never going to do it. And I was terrified. I mean, if it wasn't if it wasn't for her, I would probably still be chained to the golden handcuffs of corporate America. So um, she instilled the confidence in me, and it was actually perfect timing because. Uh, it was a little scary, but she was had laid off. She was laid off, and we su- surprisingly we were trying to have kids, but it was difficult. And when she actually left her her job for the last time, she took the severance package during a during possible layoff. They said you can have the severance package if you want to go. That would help us out. And she said yes, I do. So she took it. And uh, I guess stress that was keeping us from getting pregnant left, and she got pregnant and. We, um, she set the business up while, while after we had the baby to basically function as if I did not have the crutch of the, the other job. So I took my two weeks plus the 10 weeks and worked, you know, obviously spend time with my newborn, but to work as if that were my full-time job. And, Ah. um, so when I came back 
to, and obviously I've talked to your husband, Andy, <laughs> about yeah. senior portrait work and the business and everything, which, you know, that's another story of where, how beneficial he was to my inspiration and, and confidence. But man, the day, the day that I call, uh, was supposed to come back, HR called and said, Hey, we're just, you know, this is your day. And I know you're excited to be back in the field. And I had that voicemail about eight thirty that morning. And, um, I went outside in the backyard and popped open a beer and called my boss and said, uh, yeah, I'm not coming back. Oh my and, goodness. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was scary, but I just, I mean, you know, charged forward from there. And, um, you know, like I said, being able to being in having the business world and the psychology and emotion of, of dealing with, with people as a background certainly helped me out and prepared me. Um, for this and the entire time of my my business even the early days I put myself in the client position and a dad's position of a senior and said okay how would I respond to this you know what would I what would I do if if my daughter wanted to go to this person or my wife said that uh we wanted to book him and that's kind of been my my litmus test so I just charged forward and and uh and learned along along the way. I tried to eradicate any left field. I am not. I don't like shock. I don't like surprises. I don't like pop ups. I don't like anything like that. So I am a planner, and uh, I wanted to put things in place in the business where people are not. You know, everything's out in the open. There's no hidden this or surprise that. This is what it costs. This is when we're going to do it. These are what the pictures look like. These are the outfits. Uh, down to the point of saying, okay, look, if, if, you know, don't make the, the sales appointment be the time where dad is, where this is the first time dad has seen the prices for my professional consumer photography portraits of your, of your daughter. You know, let, if, if whoever's going to be here, they need to see this price list or call me or talk about it or go over everything because I don't, I don't want y'all to be surprised and I don't want me to be surprised. So, I want everything along this. And I've always said that if you stay on my, my railroad track through this process, you will be, you will be thrilled. But whenever someone tries to get off that track and say, well, we want to do, you know, we want to, we want to do a sports shoot, but they won't have their new uniforms for two weeks. Can we do that part of it later? If I jump the track and do that, everything comes unglued. If someone wants to break up payments this way or sister's not home from college until this weekend, can we meet and do that part of the shoot? Because I may want some of those to go in the last few pages of her album. Everything comes unglued. But if you stick with my procedure, which is kind of meticulous and stringent, you, you'll you come out on the other side thrilled. That's always been the goal. Yeah, with a great experience. John, what, yeah. what's the best advice you'd ever received? I would say not to wallow in mediocrity, not to not to live in photography bulletin boards or, or Facebook groups now is what you call them. You know, social media is a great place for to vent, complain, bitch, throw up extreme problems for shock value so people can can hear it. You know, no, nobody ever gets online and or rarely do they get online and talk about what a great experience things are. You know, if, if when you go out of town, you stay at a hotel, they've got to really wow you to come back home and for you to sit down and type out a well-written, superb review of a resort. But if you get there and there's roaches on the floor and nobody clean up the room and the food's horrible, you cannot wait to bitch about that. <laughs> And that's just that's just who we are. So if you stay in in those uh, those bulletin boards, or I keep saying that, I have no idea. I guess that's what they used to call them. But in the Facebook groups with that negativity, it's it's not going to help you. And you know, along those lines, look outside of the industry for inspiration. Uh, don't just you know try to copy and obsess over other portrait photographers. Look outside the industry, look at brands, look at retail clothing, look at restaurants, look at CEOs, you know, read other books about business. Don't just stay in your little world where to a hammer, everything's a nail. 
expand your horizon, look outside so that you can take elements of things outside of the industry that you're in and bring them to your own industry, if that makes sense. That's good. That's really good. So what would you say, you know, coming from all of that is one of your personal habits that you think contributes to your success? Consistently engaged with clients. Yeah. You know, rarely does two days go by or three days go by where I'm, and it's so funny. The perception is almost hilarious because everybody just thinks I'm just this world traveler that goes all over the place. Where are you going to be this weekend, Miami or New York? And I went to Miami one time, <laughs> you know, or in April, and they just assume. And I guess it's the the story and the uh, the brand that I create online that I'm, you know, in Miami every other weekend. But the consistency, the consistency, and the positivity. And the uniqueness just over and over and over again so that, that people see the brand, see the work and know, and, and know what's coming and expect it. So how do you do that? I, th- I feel like I've heard at one time you had like you would do a session in the afternoon and before that you would work out and before that you would spend an hour on social media saying happy birthday to people. Like, do you have a schedule that you do that? <laughs> Um, it, it, well, Adderall helps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I, of course I love to work out cause that keeps me from, from going crazy, but I'll tell you something that I've, that I've been doing for years. It's probably a good secret, but I'll let it out of the bag. Is there's an app on my iPad pro and it's on your phone too. If you want it, it's called Flipboard, and it's a, a digital kind of, not a magazine, not an e-zine or a e-web magazine, but Basically, what Flipboard is, is that it's an app you can download and then you can pick topics and it will fill those topics with current news and information. So you set it up, you go through and you say, okay, I want to pick photography, um, drone, uh, pop culture, Kendall Jenner, politics, uh, technology, science, and food. And it will say, okay. And then when you pick up Flipboard and go back to the home screen, you will see all these articles that trigger those keywords pumped into one little amazing board that you flip the pages through. So it highlights current things. And I spend every morning 15 or 20 minutes with my coffee going through that because F stoppers is pulled. And what are you doing? Like, what are you looking for? Like things to post on? like repost those articles or things to talk about? Things to talk about, reasons to post, current trends, so I know what's going on. You know, okay. if, if, And not necessarily so, that I'm going to post or take advantage of it, but I think it's cool that I know that Eminem threw shade to this rapper, you know? Right. I mean. <laughs> it's kind of like the yeah. news, but the news that's specifically towards your business. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm, I've got, or towards me, my, yeah. my individual, you know, John Pyle brand for whatever that's worth. I, you know, my, mm-hmm. my workout feed, my drone feed, my pop culture feed, music feed, all that stuff that is me that I love and business feed. So, mm-hmm. you know, I may open the cover page and it has, you know, 10 tips of intermittent fasting. And then uh, Tony Robbins is, says, this is the key to being positive in your business. And then, Another article on Kendall Jenner's top three swimsuit trends for the summer. Um, you know, so you see yeah. all this stuff and it keeps you current in a very concise, easy, mobile way without, you know, kind of gives you a, a, a point to start from every day to kind of fill your head with stuff. I have meditation things on there. I have positivity, business quotes, all kind of things that go into my head for 15 or 20 minutes before anybody wakes up that starts my day. So I highly recommend the flipboard app that's that's great advice yeah no that's definitely a an action step in itself you know just to go download mm-hmm. it and start using it that's that's a pretty, oh yeah that's a pretty easy one um do you have any other internet resources that you uh would recommend to our audience or things that you use besides uh, flipboard the news app on ipad pro is great but other than that it's it's flipboard and and social media uh instagram right now is is key. Instagram stories are key. I would say I would rank everything as Instagram, then Facebook, and then everything starts to plummet off for my business. I'm not really engaged on Snapchat. I don't use that anymore. 
Twitter is a place to, you know, make hateful political comments. Pinterest is cool if you're extremely bored. But <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I shouldn't say that because I do have a active. I, well, I don't know if it's active, but I have a big Pinterest page for for style for outfits. Yeah. So somebody can go on Pinterest and see men's fashion or female fashion or workout motivation or you know things like that on a board that I created. And sometimes I'll go on there and and add a couple of things. But it, you know the the Instagram and the Instagram story are are key right now. So for Facebook, how do you do that? I've noticed that you will post, like, do you post the completely separate post from what you're doing with your, with your actual sessions or with Instagram? Is it a completely different post than Facebook? Yeah, I have to, I've kind of stepped back and and say, okay, you know, that every Instagram that I post is set up to go to my Facebook business page. But a little trick that I'll do because the engagement on a Facebook business page is horrendous. I mean, oh yeah. I can, I can get five or 600 likes on an Instagram page and get one like on Facebook business. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you, I mean, how is this even possible? Like, so you're yeah. telling me one person out of the nearly 11,000 people on Facebook saw this picture and liked it. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I know, I feel like you got to pay to play from that end. Oh, you do. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think that's a feeling. I think that's reality. Yeah. Yeah. So what I will do is I will go in and, it takes a little bit of extra time, but I will go into the Instagram post and click on the arrow or the dot, I can't remember, and hit share. And it gives you the option to go down and copy the link. Mm-hmm. So I will copy that link and then go on to my personal Facebook page. And, and repost it. it. Yeah. Okay. So then it pops up. And then I will actually go back in because you can't do it from a mobile device. You have to do it from a desktop application of Facebook. I will go back ah. in either on a laptop or on my PC or my, my, sorry, my Mac on my desktop. And tag the mom and the senior in the Instagram post with mm. some copy or some words that, that I think do better on Insta on Facebook than they would on Instagram. So I can tailor that message. So you're essentially massaging your Facebook post and reposting it to your personal account. Yeah, I'm I'm massaging and reposting the Instagram post and yeah. putting it onto the Facebook personal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that lets me tag the people. That lets me tag mom, dad, the school, yeah, yeah. Um, the location. I can actually go in and and do the activities or the emotions. A lot of times I'll put John is, and it'll say celebrating senior year. And I'll mm-hmm. have the camera emoji mm-hmm. with the excitement face or whatever. You know, you can do a lot with that. And a lot more people see it and are engaged with it That's on Facebook fun. than they would be on the business page. Very cool. So uh, do you, are you a reader? Yes, yes. I'm actually reading um, Jordan Peterson's book, and let me pull up the title. It's the Twelve Steps to. Let me pull that up. There's actually two books that I can recommend. Is it the um, one that says "Don't Lie"? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, you asked me about another um, avenue or another thing that I use, um, Matt. I think what uh, podcast. I listen to Ooh. podcasts a lot when I when I work or edit or when I work out. And wow, talk about Flipboard for the Ears is uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. He's the, if he's not the number one downloaded podcast right now, I don't know what he is. Um, yeah, no, he, but, he's, but he's like, he's number one and he's like stratospheric number one. Like no yeah. one's even touching, no one's touching him. He is absolutely amazing. And it's a break from these little talk show pundits where you get on there and somebody tries to outwit somebody for, you know, two and a half minutes or three minutes and nobody learns anything because he's, he's different because he sits down and he talks to people from all walks of life for an hour and a half or two hours, engaging them and asking them questions and getting their feedback. So you really have a time, you really have time to know the person and connect with the person and kind of, kind of get ideas. And I highly recommend, uh, listen to that. And that's where I came across, uh, Jordan Peterson, who's a Canadian clinical psychologist who wrote the book, The 12 Rules of Life. Oh. Um, and I'm, I'm on either eight or nine uh, rules. And it's, it's very heavily psychological based. It's very wordy, uh, the audio book. But when you get to the rules and see it, it kind of helps you see where people are coming from and, and kind of understand the, the, the decisions that they make and why they make that, those decisions. So what's so your what top rule? 
Any um, so far? <laughs> probably the the don't lie one. Um, oh, really? Because yeah, because it's it's kind of like you know don't lie to other people, but also don't lie to yourself. You know, mm-hmm. like kind of you know who are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Let's be real here with yourself, so you can be real be real with other people. If you don't like something, why are you doing it? You know, kind of yeah kind of mentality if 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 something is not going your way then why are you telling yourself that it is why are you not altering things to make it go your way or doing your best to do that so it's a it's a very detailed i think the audio looks like 12 hours long it's it's huge it's huge and then the other book that i really like is the um war of art oh yeah the opposite title from the yes yes the opposite from the art of war and he, uh, it's just, it's a great book. Every, every creative needs to, to read that. Break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. It talks about fear. Um, it talks about majorities and masses and, uh, why people do the things they do and why fear is so prevalent. And, and it's just a great, great book to read. So those are the two that I recommend along with Joe Rogan's podcast. That's great. Yeah, that's a that's a good a good list for sure. The second one that you just mentioned, um, Alice and I will be traveling here for the holidays to go see my parents in Phoenix, and it's like an eight hour drive, and we're trying to figure out which one, what book to listen to, and I think that one just got moved to the top. Um, the one we listened to coming back the other way, coming home last time, was this Extreme Ownership. Have you guys seen that? Have you guys heard of that book yet? No, I haven't. It's it's written by a Navy SEAL, and so there's a story about how you know, what happened in his career. And then he implies that, how that, how that should be put in place in your business. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's, it's pretty intense, but um, it's really cool. And it basically is like, you know, you own all of this and you own your, you own your life. And so you just need to realize that you're in complete control. It's, it's really good. That's another good one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Taking agency, your own agency for your life. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's cool. So John, we'll wrap up there. Um, any parting advice or, uh, how we, how people can connect with you? Yeah. Everybody can find me the, uh, the consumer portrait part of my business that, uh, Instagram is, um, John D pile. I think Kai mentioned at the beginning, I've always had a love for flying. I have a private pilot's license and before a wife and kids, I used to fly all the time (laughs) and now I don't. But the fact that I love photography and flying is uh, the drone has been like the perfect marriage for that. And I've actually uh, incorporated that in, in the concessions with a senior laying down on his jet ski out in the lake or on the softball field. It just adds another element. And so I have an Instagram account for my aerial work called J-Pile Pilot, which is, which is fun and actually growing. So that's, that's cool, too. Yeah, that's really interesting. I saw I saw some of that stuff bubble up a couple months ago, and I had forgot that you were a pilot. I mean, because you know, you and I have uh, spoke at some conferences together and stuff like that, and I knew that from the very beginning when I met you years ago. But I had forgotten until just now that you actually did fly a little bit. And that's that's pretty cool. Yes, one day I'm going to physically get back up in there, but for right now, the drone is uh, it's it's quenching that thirst. Yeah, well, it's eventually, eventually your kids will uh, grow up and move out. Let's all hope that they they grow they move out. <laughs> And uh, yeah. and then you can get back after it. Well, my goal was to actually take one of my children up in the plane. And last year on my birthday, uh, my wife, Sally, and surprised me and had the uh, uh, pilot had to show up at the airport with a, a friend of mine that's a pilot. And I got to fly in the left seat and take off and fly the plane while he sat in the right seat. Um, oh, that's sweet. And uh, so Julianne, my oldest, got to ride in the back. So that was like a huge deal um, for me. So I was excited about that. That's really cool. Well, Hey, thanks John for being on our podcast. Uh, it really means a lot to us. You know, I know you're, oh, I'm yeah, you're a mover and shaker in the industry for sure. And we have a lot of respect for you. So I'm really grateful that, that you took thank time you. out of your data to, to be a part of this for sure. Thank y'all so much for asking me. I'm a huge fan of both y'all. And whenever we get to talk, which is not enough, um, I always pick up something. So I think this is a great idea and I can't wait to, to listen to uh, what else is coming next from, from this podcast. For sure. Thanks, John. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Um, so we'll see you guys next week with another guest. And until then, have a great day. 
Thank you for listening to From Nothing to Profit, a photographer's podcast with Matt and Kaya. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategy and ideas to help you create the profitable and successful business you've always wanted. See you on the next episode of From Nothing to Profit.